Yum, yum. Hey, Pixel Fawn doers. I am going to be showing you the Mesh Paint tool in Moto. It's an older tool, super powerful, but it's also uh, kind of janky and there's so many settings. And if you have the settings wrong or using it in the wrong mode, it'll be slow and miserable experience. So I'm gonna try to show you the bestest, fastest way to use this tool. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I've got this item here I'm gonna be painting onto. This is just a wall and a floor. I'll maybe show a more complex item in a minute. And I've got these two uh, four panel um, kit bash things I had bought that I'm gonna be painting onto our foreign walls, right? And okay, so we've got that. So just to get started, I'm gonna select my floor here. That's what I'm gonna be painting onto. And I've got these two guys in the scene. Now there's a couple, little bit of prep here. First of all, you can paint with presets, actual presets, you know, select presets in the mesh paint tool and paint with those. And it seems like a good idea, but it's actually kind of slow and janky because it has to load the preset into the scene when you paint. And so you think like, oh, I'll just set it to like a random preset from this preset folder and I can get a different tree stump or something in the scene every time I paint. Seems like a good idea, but it's just like, again, it has to load the preset into the scene and then paint with it. And it's kind of, it just slows it down. So the best way to do it is just load the presets you want to use into the scene. Like I loaded these two floor panels. You want to make sure they're prepped in terms of uh, where the pivot is. So it's going to place the bottom of your preset wherever the pivot is. So right now the pivot on my floor panel is the bottom of the floor panel. Because I want the bottom of the floor panel to be placed on the polygon I'm painting onto. If that pivot's in the middle of this floor panel, then the, the entire floor panel is going to be stuck in the middle of the polygon I'm painting on. So make sure your pivots are at the bottom if you're doing, you know, like a tree or or pretty much anything, four panels, a barrel. The bottom is probably where you want the pivot, right? The bottom of that mesh. So make sure that it, those are prepped correctly. Okay, so let's go right to our uh, mesh paint tool and make sure we have the right settings here. So we'll get to paint mode in a second, but let's go on down here to the item effector, right? And so. Parent primary, that just means that any mesh painted into the scene will be parented to the floor. Let me back up. Make sure you're in item mode. This is kind of the most important thing. Make sure you're in item mode. If you try painting in polygon mode, if, I, if I'm over here in polygon mode and activate mesh paint and start painting, what it's doing is you'll see there's no new items added to the scene here, right? It's just adding polygons to my floor item. So my floor item now has, you know, tw what, 91,000 polys, almost 100,000 polys or something, or whatever I've selected here, 50,000 polys. That's just gonna slow it down. You don't want that, right? So what we want is to work in item mode. Super important, be in item mode. Okay, so with my floor item selected, back again, mesh paint selected, in item mode, got my pivot set up. I wanna make sure that I have this little instance button here checked. That means it's gonna paint an instance of one of my floor panels into the scene onto my floor and wall. We don't wanna have that unchecked because it's just gonna paint mesh items which take up more memory and add tons of polygons to the scene. So have instance selected. You can always turn it to a mesh item by right-clicking Moto, super easy. Bounding box will just make it faster. So right now I have the source set to random background. That's fine. So Again, in, in Moto, I don't really like this terminology, but the foreground item is the one we have selected, and then the background item is anything that's not selected. So I only have two other items in this scene. And with background items, in the Mesh Paint tool, let me just drop the tool and add another background item here. We'll just add like a, a teapot. So I have this teapot here, and I can move it. I can move these off origin, by the way, in item mode, so I can move these out of the way, and it's fine. It's still going to work as long as they're transformed in item mode. It's just going to take their original setup at 000 to paint them. If I have my uh, floor here, if I have my teapot hidden and I go to mesh paint and I have it set to random background, if I have a teapot hidden, it's not going to use it as a random background. You'll see I'm, it's just picking these four panels here, right? And randomly it picked this one five out of six times. That's uh, some weird odds. Um, so you can hide the items you don't want to paint with if you select random background. Anything visible will be what you're painting with, okay? So let me just delete these and go back to the mesh paint tool again. You can also pick a specific item if you want to. I could just say specific item and then I could pick any item. So this is where Moto's actually pretty, uh, pretty unique. Where 
items are items. A camera is just an item. A light's just an item. You know, uh, a particle modifier is just an item. I, I could probably paint with those two. It's just placing the transform of those items around. So if I have cameras visible here, so I turn on my, do I have a camera in the scene? Yeah, I do have a camera in the scene. Where's my camera? There it is. So I have cameras as my specific item. It, it will paint cameras into the scene, which is totally weird, but you can do it if you want. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is you can do a specific item if you want to. Uh, but we're just going to do random and we'll look at one more setting here. Yeah, bounding box. Again, that's just going to, um, you know, it's going to paint with bounding boxes, which, you know, if, if you're getting slow downs, you can get a little faster if you have bounding box on. And then it's just a it's just a display setting. So I can go back over to display, turn off bounding box, and there they are. So if you have bounding box checked on. All it does is check that bounding box, display checkbox on your instances. Which is which is fine, you know. If, you, if if it speeds you up a little bit, that's great. You know, if not, it doesn't. So when you're painting meshes, whether you're set dressing or doing detail work, you want control over three things, right? The position, the rotation, and the scale. There's a ton of options in the mesh paint tool. None of them are super great. Um, some of them are pretty great for like two of the three, and uh, but there's nothing really great for all of them. So again, this is where it gets a little janky. So I'll go through the different modes and which ones are best for what. So the best one for positioning is the slide mode. So I have it set to slide, so I'm gonna be able to click and drag and position it exactly where I want it. I have rotation set to surface align, which is good because it'll look wherever I click down and it'll align this mesh to the polygon underneath. So on the floor, it'll be oriented correctly. On the wall, it'll be oriented correctly. If you're painting on a dinosaur and you're painting horns, they'll be oriented to the polygons underneath. So that surface line is really great. Scale set to uniform and size 100%. So uniform will look to this scale right here. So it'll just plant these down at this scale. If I want them half that size, I turn this to 50% and I have some options. Adaptive, random, adaptive plus random, <laughs> locked. So with, with adaptive, it'll try to look at the polygon underneath that you're mousing down on. If it's a big polygon, it'll make it bigger. If it's a small polygon, small polygon will make it smaller. That's nice for, for some organic stuff, right? For this sort of hard surface stuff, we'll just keep it to uniform and surface line. And like I said, slide is the best for positioning. So I can position wherever I want it, click, drag, position exactly where I want it. Very tweaky, right? And because my rotation is at the surface line, it'll look underneath the, the mouse and it'll align to the surface. I could even drag from one to the other. See how cool that is? And put it wherever I want it. So that's pretty great. So slide, great for positioning. For scale, I can do random, which can be useful. You know, there's a big one, there's a little one. There's a, there's just kind of like, it's not, a, it's not the greatest. I can't just precisely control the scale. But I can do that with a drop mode. So let's go to that. Let's do the drop mode right here. Drop. This will allow me to adjust scale. Now, I won't be able to slide around and get precise positioning. So wherever I mouse down, that's going to be where it's going to be. Mouse down, and instead of doing position, I can drag to adjust scale. So it's a really nice mode, drop, for adjusting scale. Now, I still have adaptive on surface align on rotation. So it'll align it where I want it, right? What I'd like to see with surface align, if I click and drag, if I sort of start rotating my stylus in a circle here, I can get sort of 90 degree rotations as it's also going up and down like crazy because I'm moving the mouse. So again, it's kind of janky, right? I can get 90 degree rotations, but then I have to, you know, sort of like make sure, be really careful with how I'm adjusting the scale and not wanting it to accidentally flip like it just did. So again, this is where this tool can be improved. I'd like to see, for instance, I love clicking and dragging for scale, but maybe just a like a control key modifier to switch drag to you know rotation, right? And just you know heading or rotation on the Y to like you know get at the right angle, and maybe you know uh, uh, snapping to ninety degree rotations. Okay, so that's a nice way to do it. Or even using the keyboard, just arrows, just click, 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 and do you know 90, 90, 90 to get it wherever you want it. But instead, I've got this sort of, you know, jankville where sort of works, sort of doesn't, really not precise. Um, so that's drop. If you want drop with rotation, you go to drop no scale. Now I can drag it and get my rotations, my 90 degree, you know, rotations here, and it's snapping to 90. I could turn that off and just get free rotation. 
and just no control over scale, right? Or real control over position. So drop, no scale, with either 90 degree rotations clicked or 90 degree rotations unclicked give you really price, precise control over rotation. Basically what you're seeing here is that the dragging is what gives you precise control, right? Dragging like OmniHall, that's why it's such a big deal, is gives you the best control. So with drop no scale, the dragging is rotation, best control over rotation. With slide, best dragging is, I'm gonna turn this off to, turn this back to 100 here. Uh, dragging is position, so best control over position. And with the regular drop, dragging is scale. So it's going to be the best control over scale. Everything else is a bit of a compromise, right? So those three, slide, drop, drop no scale, are the best ones for individually placing your, your mesh items onto another mesh. And again, like I said, slide for position, drop for scale, drop no scale for rotation. Everything else, there's all these other rotation modes that are just um, like service align plus tablet, service align plus tablet, no pitch. All these just give me kind of weird, I, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, like it just isn't, it's just jankville. It doesn't work super well. So it's more of a user interface issue and this tool trying to do too much. Um, so I, we do need a new tool or an improvement here. I think just a brand new tool, I think would be the best way to do it. Uh, but there's a couple more useful things here. We can also do um, arrays, which is pretty cool. So I've got a linear array. I'm going to set my array count to like six and I can just click and drag and there I've got a nice linear array of floor panels, pretty cool. Now again, I can't adjust this clone amount after I lay it down and there's no OmniHall working here either. So ideally it would work something like this, like the clone tool with OmniHall is pretty great. So if I just make a cube here and go to duplicate and instance clone and make sure between is clicked, I can click and drag and then right click drag and get as many in between there as I want. Really nice workflow. I would like this sort of mesh paint tool to work that way. Unfortunately, it does not. It has a radial array, so I can click and drag. I've got surface align for my rotation mode. And there, it's, it's pretty cool. It even, even you know goes across the two surfaces and knows how to, to set that correctly. Let me just change my account to like five or something. So I could set it here and it'll crawl up the wall, which is pretty cool, definitely. And just a regular array as well, if we just want a 2D array. So we can get something like that. Um, so those are, you know, they're kind of cool, kind of useful. Uh, so those are kind of cool as well. And you can use this on a more complex scene. So let me go to a more complex scene and just try to use our slide stroke and drop to dress a little sci-fi scene. So I've got a more complex scene here. I've got this cool sci-fi hallway I made out of kitbash items. And I'm going to be placing some canisters and crates and stuff like that. Let me just take a look at these really quick. canister, a couple canisters, crates, and this little cargo item here. These are all high poly items, right? So that's, you know, 200,000 polys and 32,000. So these are pretty big. And my hallway is like almost 10 million. So let's see how it performs here. All right. So let's do mesh paint. I'm going to slide here. So there we go. So this is a, you know, a big scene. It's, it's, 10 million polys and really high mesh item presets that are, are working quite quickly with my, um, working very quickly with this tool, right? So let me just do a specific item maybe. We'll do uh, a crate, Put a crate over here. Again, I'm using just slide. And so, you know, it's seen some of these little, you see that flickering, it's seen some of these little tiny, you know, edge bevels and things and aligning it to that. If I go to drop, we can adjust scale. So let's maybe go to um, a canister, maybe. Let's put a canister at the front of my wall here and just use drop. So it's going to scale as my best uh, drag mode there. Maybe pick a different canister and scale one up right here, a little bit bigger. So 
with in item mode using instances even on a background with 10 million polygons it works pretty well we'll do drop no scale here drop another canister but because we have no scale we can rotate nicely so we'll rotate it maybe something like that or like that 90 degree rotations on maybe do one more canister three maybe turn off 90 degree rotations just sort of swing it around there like so so you can see this this works pretty well for set dressing we just um, delete this guy taking up a lot of room and do and just do a couple more drops here so maybe we'll get one here because i have drop on i can scale it up again my janky scale sort of, sort of works a little bit so i could swing it around same time maybe like that pretty big canister for a spaceship i guess all right i'll drop a few more guys on here but yeah like i said with the right settings it's pretty quick you know and it's it's picking out yeah and it works pretty well right they're all stuck on the bottom there uh if i want to control rotation again i just do drop with no scale and i could spin it around and then slide of course to really get it on the positioning really accurate and of course they're just mesh instances so at the end of the day you can select that and, and scale it down or, or move it around if you want to but the whole point of using a painting workflow is just to do it um, way faster than this sort of tool handle workflow which you know just kind of sucks uh, to do this kind of stuff so that's it so hopefully i know this went on a long time but hopefully this is uh, useful to you for using the mesh paint tool and using it fastly and efficiently and ignoring the bad parameters and using the good parameters yum yum